It's Stefano Sitsipas. Thank you for joining us, brother. Thank you for having me. It was a very strong win today against Nori. Um, it looked like a much higher level performance than your opening round. Would you? Did you feel that way as well? I did feel that way. I think my start uh, was very different to what it was in uh, my first match. I came in so strong. My balls were pressing straight away. I felt the rotation in my um, forehand. It was really going deep into the court. I was able to I was able to open up the court uh, relatively well, get the angles right, and uh, you know my serve. I got a lot of free points from my serve, uh, just getting the spots, getting that next forehand after the serve. So it worked out well. I knew that Cameron is going to try and fight back. You know he's not going to try and stay in the same um, or rallies or uh, the same ways that I was able to win points at the time. And he delivered a little bit uh, of a different tennis, taking the ball, the ball a little bit more early, pressing a little bit more, playing deeper into the court. I had to adjust. It took me a while. I think his level just raised by by that point. I I, I faced a much much better opponent than I did in the first set. And, uh, the tiebreaker was uh, purely, let's say, luck with one of the smashes that went, went out. Uh, but uh, my shots were on point there. They were deep. They were creating a lot of pressure. I could feel it every time I, I hit one of them. Well, Steph, you're, you're now in with some great momentum here in Rome. But I just want to talk about that first round for a little bit because you, you said after that you, you really hadn't felt that way in quite some time, where you, you didn't feel great on the court. You found a way to win, which is the true sign of a champion. But when you're in the middle of that, how do you how do you find your way through? That's a great question. It's more of a spiritual thing than it is a mental where you think and you try and put yourself in a in a comfortable situation. First of all, it's about relaxing, just letting everything sink in, and not try and process every single ball that's coming your way. Just respond to every single shot. You don't have to go for the biggest of, the, of, of shots. Just try and get play on court. I was just missing a lot. I was making a lot of unforced errors. I wasn't consistent, and you could see that. Uh, I could feel that uh, as well. And once I started making a little bit of play, finding the depth of the court, uh, trying to stay in the rallies, even though you know it wasn't really going my way at that point, I felt a, a little bit of a relief come my way. My serve improved over time. I got a much better consistency on my serve, which is important. It's not the biggest thing on clay to serve big and serve aces, but once you get the precision in and you try and place it strategically so you can build up around the next forehand or the, the backhand, it does help you a lot. They always say one of the greatest assets of an athlete, especially a tennis player who has to play match after match, is have the memory of a goldfish. You know, you, you forget immediately. Yeah. And, you know, in that last match, we saw you probably more frustrated and, and angry than, than you normally are. And you were able to just sort of put all of that beside you. And you, you started out so hot here. Uh, do you not stay with negative moments for very long? It's not, not an easy thing to do. I don't tend to have moments like this a lot in terms of, you know, rackets flying away and uh, uh, putting my anger on the racket. Uh, but uh, it does alleviate some of that frustration and pain that I'm going through during the match. Sometimes it does help a lot. It does uh, bring a, a fresher outlook on things and it, it does help clear the mind. Um, I knew I was going downhill from that point and there was nothing more that I could do to go further down so every single small thing that I added to my game it felt like a, a breath of fresh air again uh, um, inclining upwards and getting myself back in a position where I can fight where I can present something new uh, it was refreshing when I got that second set I knew that I was back into the game uh, right in that very moment that's when I started thinking that I got this I can really push through I love that. I love hearing that because, you know, even the, even the great champions of our game, there are ups and downs, but it's how you navigate. And now, look, you've moved on to the next round. Um, Steph, you're, as we talked about, a very passionate guy. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of people here who love you. And um, as Maria talks about, una faccia, una racha, there's very similar energies between Greeks and Italians. What does playing here do for your spirit? Look, I travel a lot around the world. I don't get to play in a country that's so close to my country. And I can certainly feel it when I'm out on the court. There's Greek flags all over the place. Even the Italians, they support me as if <laughs> I am part of their compatriots. Uh, so it does help a lot getting uh, support like this from people. The best thing about it is that I don't feel like I'm in my own sort of uh, country, let's say, where you get that pressure of playing at home. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a sweet feeling where you get the support, but you're still in a beautiful country like Italy. Yeah. Rome is one of the most amazing cities in the world. 
uh, playing tennis here on the clay, getting the support of Italians, Greeks, just playing in your favorite surface, which is clay. I mean, how, how much better can you get? Yeah, you can see it on your face. <laughs> you're, you're, you're glowing over here. Um, Steph, it's probably safe to say that you've, you've, you've had the best clay court season thus far. You were brilliant in Monte Carlo. You followed that up in Barcelona. And, um, and now you're playing well against here. Um, going into RG, how important is it for you to have a spectacular result here? It's important to build up momentum, get a lot of matches under my belt. I've had uh, some good matches so far on the clay court swing. Uh, it adds a lot to the confidence. You know, these are the type of matches that I want to be able to um, navigate through and find solutions in those critical moments, such as a tiebreaker today. I think that's an important, um, uh, let's say, moment that I was able to withstand and endure uh, and win at the very end. That, that is definitely going to carry uh, at the French Open. Uh, the French Open, obviously, is the, where I want to pick and, and get the, the, uh, at the best of my game. We still have a lot of time ahead of us. I am currently focusing here. Um, I have strong opponents coming my way. Yep. I need to get ready for big matches. And uh, hopefully, like, I can continue getting that amazing support that people have been giving me, especially in difficult situations. You cannot... Uh, you cannot understand how big it is to have, especially when you're going through tough moments and perhaps you're doubting a little bit yourself in, in certain situations during the match, to have fans uh, chant your name, show you the way. Yeah. These are the, the moments that you're looking for as a tennis player. And it's not, not a lot of players get that. So it's a beautiful thing that you get it, you feel it, and you use it. Um, you'll take on Alex Zeminar next. You have a very strong head-to-head -head against him. So we'll let you get some rest and uh, go do your thing. Bit by bit. Grazie mille.